Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today we will learn about x-ray features of pulmonary tuberculosis. We will compare the normal chest x-ray images with images of tuberculosis. But first, we will look at the tests, sputum tests, which are specific for pulmonary tuberculosis. It is very important to correlate the x-ray and other imaging findings with lab tests and microbiological tests for a correct diagnosis. In suspected tuberculosis, sputum smear microscopy, CBNAAT, and mycobacterial culture are the key microbiological investigations. Sputum smear microscopy is the simplest and fastest test, where an early morning deep cough sputum sample is collected in a sterile container and stained for acid-fast bacilli. It is mainly used for rapid detection of infectious patients, but cannot identify the species or drug resistance. CBNAAT, or Gene Expert, uses a sputum sample or other site-specific specimen such as bronchoalveolar lavage, pleural fluid, or lymph node aspirate and its main use is rapid and specific detection of mycobacterium tuberculosis, making it the preferred initial diagnostic test. Mycobacterial culture, considered the gold standard, is performed on sputum or relevant body fluid or tissue samples and is mainly used for definitive diagnosis, although it takes several weeks to yield results. On the left is a normal chest x-ray image in PA view. On radiography, we can divide each lung into three zones. Upper, middle, and lower. The upper zone is from the lung's apex to the upper margin of the hilum. This is the hilum, where structures like bronchi, pulmonary arteries, pulmonary veins, nerves, and lymphatics enter and exit, connecting the lung to the heart and trachea. The hilum has a high-density, bright, tubular, and irregular shape on radiography. This is its upper margin, so the upper zone of the lung ends at this point. The middle zone of the lung is from the superior hilar margin to the inferior hilar margin. The lower zone starts from the inferior hilar margin down to the costophrenic sulcus. On the right is an image showing a round opacity in the left lung's middle zone. This is called a gone focus. It is often seen in initial infection. It appears either as an ill-defined or rounded radiopaque bright lesion in the lung. It represents dead tissue. This gone focus can later on calcify. It is very important to correlate this finding with the patient's clinical history, lab tests, and biological tests for a correct diagnosis because some findings do overlap with other diseases like malignancies, non-tuberculous infections, and other diseases. Another important feature that indicates tuberculosis is enlargement of lymph nodes or hilar lymphadenopathy. This finding is also correlated with the patient's clinical history and other tests. We will see an increased size of the hilum. It appears larger and brighter than the hilum you see in the normal image. It also has a more lobulated appearance. Here is another image showing a right hilar lymphadenopathy in a tuberculosis patient. You can see an enlarged, more prominent hilum. In tuberculosis, the right side is more commonly affected because the right main bronchus is wider, shorter, and more vertical than the left main bronchus. This allows easier entry of mycobacterium tuberculosis-laden droplets into the right lung. So you may find many cases of TB in which the right side is commonly affected. 
let's look at another case of tuberculosis. In this image, the right side is affected. The right hilum has a prominent, lobulated appearance. When a gone focus along with ipsilateral lymphadenopathy is present, it is called a gone complex. Ipsilateral means the lymphadenopathy must be present on the same side as the gone focus. Here, a gone focus is present in the right lung and lymphadenopathy is also present in the right lung. So this is a gone complex. Both are present on the same side. Left hilar lymphadenopathy is also present, although less extensive than the right. You can compare its appearance with the left hilum in the normal image. When the gone focus and the lymph node calcify, it is called a Ranke complex. It indicates a healed primary tuberculosis. The calcified gone focus and the lymph nodes both seem much brighter than non-calcified gone focus and non-calcified lymph nodes. Here is another example of a Ranke complex. You can see a very bright, radiopaque, gone focus and calcified lymph nodes. This is how a Ranke complex appears on an X-ray. Of course, this is correlated with the patient's history of tuberculosis and other tests. It signifies a past TB infection that the body successfully fought off, usually with no active disease. Let's compare the appearance of a gone complex and a Ranke complex on radiography. You can see that a gone complex appears less brighter than a Ranke complex. The Ranke complex contains calcified structures, so it appears denser and more radiopaque. The gone complex indicates active primary tuberculosis, whereas Ranke complex indicates a past TB infection. Miliary tuberculosis refers to diffuse tuberculous disease of the lungs and has poor prognosis. In this type of TB, there is diffuse involvement of both the lungs. You will find numerous tiny nodules measuring 1 to 3 millimeters throughout the lungs. They will appear as tiny white dots which resemble millet seeds. This appearance is termed millet seed appearance. This feature must be correlated with other tests and the patient's history. Here is another case of a miliary tuberculosis showing numerous tiny nodules in the lungs giving a millet seed appearance. Consolidation can also occur in cases of tuberculosis, although it is less common and usually involves upper zones. This finding can overlap with pneumonia, so this needs correlation with other tests. Consolidation appears as a bright, radiopaque, homogeneous, or patchy opacity in the lung. A consolidation will show these subtle, low-density, radiolucent, tubular structures representing air-filled bronchi within the consolidation. These are called air bronchograms, and their presence usually indicate that it is a consolidation rather than a lung collapse. Here is a case of tuberculosis in a pediatric patient. A consolidation is present in the right upper and middle zones. Also, there are numerous tiny nodules present in both the lungs, indicating miliary tuberculosis. Pleural effusion associated with tuberculosis is usually unilateral and commonly right-sided. Due to the same reasons we learned earlier that TB affects the right side more often. This effusion is usually moderate to large. It appears as a radiopaque accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity. No air bronchograms are seen. And you will see another sign called the meniscus sign, which is seen in effusions. 
The upper border of the fluid will have a concave shape. This concavity is called the meniscus sign. A cavitation is a hallmark of post-primary tuberculosis. It indicates severe pulmonary TB. On an X-ray, it appears as a thick walled cavity with a radiopaque wall and a radiolucent dark center. Multiple cavities may be seen in some cases. It is usually present in the upper zones. Here is another image showing a cavitation. Thick radiopaque walls are noted with a heterogeneous radiolucent center. This seems to contain two cavities. It is also present in the upper zone. These findings are seen in better detail on a CT scan. So HRCT is recommended for these cases as well as for the cases we saw earlier. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more imaging videos.